Now, before we get started on this teaching, which is going to be titled God's Love and His Wrath, we're going to learn all about, all about God's love. But then we're going to learn that there's another side of God that we don't want to see, okay? But before I get started, I want to read these verses. John 6, 63. It is the Spirit that quicketh, makes alive. It's the Spirit. We know all about the Holy Spirit right now. We all, we all know exactly what the Holy Spirit is. It's the Spirit of God, and it's holy and awesome, and it lives in us. The flesh profiteth nothing. Being in the flesh is getting us nowhere. When you're in the flesh, you're, you're living a... You're falling. Let me put it that way. You're falling. When we're in the flesh, we're falling. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. This is Jesus speaking. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Amen. Flesh is death. Spirit is alive and life. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now remember these verses that I'm reading. Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is quick, alive, and powerful. We already know that. And sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing sunder, asunder of soul and spirit. Is the word of God in us? If the Lord is the Lord in us, then it's alive and powerful. Amen. It's alive and powerful. Do we use that power? That's the question for all of us. The question we all ask ourselves, do we use this power? Do we use it? And that's a serious question. Now, do we know that the sword cuts two ways? It's a it's two-edged sword. And we're going to find one side of the sword is love. The other side of the sword is God's wrath. It's a two-edged sword. He cuts both ways. He cuts you the good way or he'll cut you the bad way. All right? It separates the soul, which is focused on the inner life, the soul, like the mind, the will, our emotions. But the spirit seems to focus more on our supernatural divine power that we have. That's what our, our spirit does. And the spirit of God, the spirit of God, the spirit of God is in us. I don't get tired of saying that. The spirit of God is in us. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Psalms 119, 130. The entrance of thy words giveth light, and it giveth understanding unto the simple. When we study, when we study the Bible, it gives us light. You know, how much light has the Lord given us? I mean, y'all been coming here a long time. Y'all got enough light in y'all. Y'all should be glowing like I don't know what, all right? And when this happens, when we study and receive his light, it makes it easy to understand his words, amen? God's words are not difficult to understand. Men, men have made them that way. But God's words right here are simple, amen? 1 John 1, 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Amen. God is, our, God is our guide. We follow him. And when that happens, what's he say? When that happens, when we follow him, there is no darkness in our life. Y'all hear that? That's what the Lord has said to us. And that's true. When we're walking in spirit, walking with the Lord, we should have no darkness in our life. Now, we're not going to be perfect because we do fall. But as soon as we fall, we know what to do, right? right? Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. And praise God, he does. He's always ready to forgive us. Amen. Jeremiah 29, 20, verse 9. His word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. Amen. Amen. 
We are anxious. Listen, we are anxious and hungry to hear his words. How many of us come to, to church, can't wait till Tuesday to hear the word of God? We were supposed to be that way. I know I was. When I went to my Bible teacher, I could not wait. Friday would. It, it, Friday took too long to get here. I couldn't wait till Friday because I knew I was going to get fed the word of God. Amen. I was hungry for it. And and when when you're that way, when we are that way, his word goes deep in our heart because we're hungry for it. Amen. goes deep in our heart. Not here, in our mind. It goes into our heart. That's when you're hungry for the word of God. Psalms 119, verses 9 through 11. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Now we can stay pure by studying his word. Stay pure. How many of us want to stay pure? Amen. Verse 10. With my heart, with my whole heart I have sought thee. I let me, oh let, oh let me not wander from thy commandments. We follow him with all of our hearts. We follow him with all of our hearts. We won't fall. Amen. Amen. I mean, that's why. I sought thee with all of my heart. I'm seeking you with all of my heart, Lord. I, I, this is the way, this is disciples. Yeah. Remember we had a teaching on the difference between Christians and disciples. Christians, they go to church. Yeah. Disciples grow in the word of God. Amen. Amen. Verse 11, thy word have I hid in my heart. Oh, amen. amen. That I might not sin against thee. We store up his word in our heart. We store it in our heart. So we won't sin against the Lord. Who, well, I'm asking a lot of questions, but don't answer. Don't raise your hand now. But who, who, who wants to sin against the Lord God who gave us life? Who wants to sin against him? That's what we do when we allow the devil to come in and tempt us with this or that. And we do it. We're sinning against God, the one who sent his only son, his only son, to come and die on the cross for us. He did no wrong. We did all the wrong. We were sinners living in darkness, wicked and evil. That's who we were. Before you became a Lord, I don't care how good of a person you was. I don't care. You were wicked and you were evil. Because that's the way we are without the Holy Spirit. Okay? Now, this is a question, and this is a very serious question. Y'all listen. Do we, still, do we still have the same walk that we had when we first started coming to this church? That's a question for y'all. Here's a question for me too. But do we still have that same walk that we had at the beginning when we first started coming? It's a question for you. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Hopefully we have grown through this church that we're still not the same age that we were when we started coming the first time. Hopefully that's the way it is. If we obey and live the words of God, then we're growing. We're growing. We're not the same. We're not the same. People who saw you at the beginning of your Christian life, oh, there's a change in him or her. Okay, good. But if they come back 10 or 15 years, 20 years from now, and they still see more change, amen. Right. But if that change is still the same when they first saw you, when you got born again, that's not an amen. Y'all hear me? Yeah. They're going to see the power of God in you now. They're going to see your light shining because you didn't have the light shining at the beginning. You just got born again. But once you started studying the word of God and you started growing, then the light got brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. And it should be, like I said earlier, our light should be just glowing out, out in the darkness. It should be. We need this growing to be continually, continually growing. If we have this church here for another 50 years, we're going to grow for the next 50 years. Amen? We're not going to stop growing. We never get to that point where uh, I'm there. No, we're not going to be there until we're in heaven with the Lord Jesus. Amen? Amen. Listen to me. 
please, please listen to me. The question that I, that I put to y'all, am I still the same as I was 10, 12 years ago when I started? Am I still the same? Those of you on YouTube, website, are you still the same whenever you started listening to me? If you're not, I mean, if, if you are, you need to repent and ask the Lord to start feeding you so you can grow. And he has been feeding us. We can't blame him, can we? It's us that's not receiving it. We're the ones not, if we're not growing, it's because we're not receiving it. Because I know in this church, the Lord speaks to us every Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. He speaks to us every Tuesday night. The Lord does. So he has given us every opportunity to be strong, powerful Christians. Amen? Thank you, Thank you Lord. Now I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now. The Lord has chosen us. Listen to me. The Lord has chosen us at this time. He has at this time to be here in this church and to live in this time of darkness in the world. He has chosen us. Psalms 139, verse 15 through 16. You watch me as I was being formed in utter seclusion. As I was woven together in the dark of the womb. He's talking about us. He's talking about us. He's watched us. You saw me before I was born. Amen. We already know that. The Lord already knows us before we were born. Every day of my life was recorded by your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. This is why I'm saying the Lord knew you were going to be here tonight. Y'all hear me? He knew y'all were going to be in this church at this time. He made this moment. Given you, he says, I'm going to give them all the, 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 I'm going to give them all my power. I'm going to give them all my strength, all my faith. Because they're going to be at the time of, of, of t they're going to be in the time of the most darkness th that this world has ever knew. We are there. We're there. They are killing Christians constantly. And like I've always told you, it will reach here because our lost leaders, which we are to pray for, we're supposed to pray for. Uh, I know some of us, we don't like Biden. But we need to pray for him. We need to pray for him. That's what the Lord says. I don't care how lost he is, how wicked he is, we need to pray for him. All right? But we're in a time right now that's really going bad. And it's going downhill quick. And he chose us to be here at this time. Why? Why? Because he's got faith in every one of y'all that y'all are going to stand up for the Lord. You, we, can fail him. But he put us here for that reason. Y'all think we were just here at born at this time? Coincidence? It's not. We just read he knew every part of our life, every day of our life. Listen to me, people. Listen to me. The power, the teaching on the Holy Spirit was not just a teaching. Oh, look, the Lord gave me this to teach on. No, there was a reason the Lord gave me such a deep teaching on the Holy Spirit. There's a reason for that. And why? <laughs> The Lord is coming. The Lord is coming. Be in his will. Please be in his will. This is not, well, Jesse, you know, they've been saying that ever since he left, that he was coming. Listen to me, people. I'm not going to do a teaching on all the signs that have happened. I'm not going to do a teaching on that. But through the signs that I've seen, what's going on out there in the world right now, right now, today, Rapture, I mean the tribulation is just around the corner. Listen to me. The tribulation is just around the corner. I don't know when, but it is. It is. I have been studying the Bible a long time. The tribulation 
is right there. We're just inches away from things that are happen that are going to happen in the tribulation. And I'm going to have a further teaching on that later. But I'm just letting you know, God made us for this moment, made you, 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 me. He made us for this moment. Take advantage of it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you saw in me that I could, I could be someone in this moment in life. Amen. Thank you, Lord. That's, I wanted to read these scriptures to you. Because we need to take the word of God. I mean, this is not just a class. Like you go to college. No. This is a spiritual, uh, the Lord speaking to us class. This is a class that's going to benefit us greatly. This is a class that we should be so honored to be under God. Amen. Now I'm going to start the teaching. But please have a sincere heart. This teaching, most of y'all know it already. About his love. About his wrath. Y'all know about that. But this teaching is for y'all to put it here. So when you put it here, you take it out there. Yeah. Take it out there. It's not to made to stay right here. Y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. God's words are not made to stay right here. Right. His words are to come here and then go out. I hope y'all heard me. That's his will for us. That's why he gave us a ministry of reconciliation, which I've preached on a hundred times. Okay? Now, as I get started, we're going we're gonna to see, you know, Matthew 7, 1 through 4. We're going to, what does this verse mean? Verse 1, judge not that you be not judged. We hear that all the time from lost people. Hey, you're not supposed to judge, right? Mm -hmm. I do. <laughs> First, he's speaking to religious leaders here. Jesus is speaking. He's speaking to religious leaders right here. He is reminding them that they are not the final judgment. They act like they were. If you read the New Testament, the religious leaders, the Pharisees, all of them, describe, they all act like they were the final judgment, that, that their word was done. That was it. But Jesus is saying right here, uh, judge not that you be not judged. Because he knew how they were judging them. How they were judging the people. The way they judged others. The way we judge. And if we don't judge the way the Lord has said to, which we're going to learn. If we don't judge that way. It's going to come back on us. It's going to come back on us. If we judge with bitterness, guess what's going to happen? Bitterness is going to come on us. People are going to judge us as being bitter. Y'all hear me? We have to watch. We have to watch that we don't judge others by the way they did. They did it by their, it was convenient for them to always put the people down. To make themselves look high. Let's don't do it that way. That's the first thing we, we're going to learn. Is we know it, we, Let's not judge that way. To make ourselves look better, higher, or whatever. Okay? When we condemn others without mercy. Without, with the wrong motives. We're not measuring up to the Lord's expectation of us. Because we're supposed to be full of love like, like the Lord was love. He, was, he gave us so much love, He gave His Son. That's how much the Lord loved us. And that's how much we need to love people. We're not here to judge people and put them down. That's the, exactly, the, exactly the opposite from what the Lord wants. Yes, we judge. And I'm going to show, show you, yes, we can judge. But the Lord said there's a way to judge. His, his divine judgment is much better than ours, you know, because we're still on this sinful, this body that's still in, we still have sin. Our sin nature is, is uh, we have to battle it every day because every day the, 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 
the demons. I'm not going to say the devil because the devil can only be in one place at one time. And believe me, he's not, he's not with me. He's not with y'all. He's got more important. He's got a more important place to be. And right now, it's probably with the Antichrist. I'm just saying that. Okay? The demons are the ones who are working on us. All right? We need to judge the way the Lord judge. That's what I have to say. With love. Not with bitterness. Not with the wrong motives. Not to make us look better. Romans chapter 2 verses 1 through 4. You may think you condemn, you can't condemn such people. But you are just as bad. And you have no excuse. When you say they are wicked and should be punished. You are condemning yourself. For you who judge others do these very same things. And we know that God, in his justice, will punish anyone who does, not, who does such things. Since you judge others for doing these things, why do you think you can avoid God's judgment when you do the same thing? Don't you see how wonderfully kind, tolerant, and patient God is with you? Does this mean nothing to you? Can you see that his kindness is intended to turn you from sin? The Lord puts it pretty good right here. He puts, I really don't have to say nothing because he said it all right there. We have seen that Jesus is not saying that we shouldn't be concerned. You know, we should be concerned on who is lost, who's going to hell. We should be very concerned about that. We'll see later in this teaching, the Lord will show us the difference between lost people and saved people. But Jesse, I kind of know that. Well, let's, let's see how the Lord says about it, okay? Now verse 2, For with what judgment is ye judged, ye shall be judged. And with what measure you meek, it shall be measured to you again. However we judge, it's going to come back to us. What standard we use to judge, that's the way we will be judged. If you judge with kindness, if we judge with kindness, of understanding and without anger, without, oh, they need to be punished. Huh? Is that what the Lord did with us? Uh-uh. He loved us. He gave us grace. He gave us forgiveness. Amen? Amen. That's the way it's going to come back on us, though. That's what he's saying right here. The way we do it, that's the way it's going to be done to us. Oh. Now, verses 3 and 4, the Lord tells us how not to judge. Verse 3, And why beholdest thou the boat that is in thy brother's eye, but considereth not the beam that is in thy own eye. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thy eye, and behold, a beam is in thy own eye. Huh? So what he's saying, uh, if you're going to someone, you know, you shouldn't be smoking. You shouldn't be drinking, getting drunk. But that, that's what we do back here. He's saying, if you're doing that, then don't judge him. But well, we already know it. We already knew that, right? If that, is, if that sin that they are doing is not in your life, okay. Okay. But the this, this sin we're talking about is the sin of being lost. You know, the Lord is going to judge lost people for what they do. Okay? He's the one that's going to judge whether someone has salvation or doesn't. He's the one that's going to, we are just here to point things out to them. And if I, and the Bible does say, if you see a brother sinning, we can approach him and point his sin out and try to get him to repent. The Lord does show us to do that. But there's a way we shouldn't judge. And that's in Matthew 26, verses 6 through 10. Now, when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper. There came unto him a woman having an ab alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head. 
on Jesus' head, and he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work unto me. Sometimes we see things and we think, Why? That's a big waste, like they did. She's pouring this very expensive ointment on his feet. And they're thinking, she's wasting it. But they didn't know what she was doing. Jesus did. She was already anointing him for his death. Which that's another teaching. But they didn't know it and they were already judging her. That's why it's hard for us to judge because we don't ever we don't get the full picture. All right? We don't have the whole picture. We see a brother or sister. You see me in a bar somewhere, but that's all you see is Jesse's in a bar, but you don't know nothing about it. Don't judge me because I might be in there trying to get a brother out of there. Y'all yeah. hear me? But people, oh, I saw Jesse in a bar, and that's all they know. Yeah. I saw Jesse in a bar. We got to understand, or if we don't, then we shouldn't say anything. Okay? These disciples, they didn't know the reason she was doing this. They didn't know it was from her heart. She was doing this from her heart. And they had already judged her. As wasting the ointment. So that's why I'm saying we need to be very careful before we judge someone. What you see with these eyes... Don't depend on it. These eyes, they will get you in trouble. That's why I'm, before I say anything about anybody, I know because I either seen it or, <clears throat> well, I seen it. But I'm not going to come up here and judge somebody. Well, this person told me that that person, I'm not going to do that. I'm going on somebody else's word. We shouldn't do that. Unless we've seen it ourselves or heard it ourselves, then we should not pass judgment on a person, okay? Now, the Lord gave us the right to judge, though. Matthew 5, 20. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. This is judging, right? We're judging here. Is our righteousness better than theirs? Well, you got to judge it. Look at it. Well, yeah, my... my my judgment on them, my righteousness is better than them. Theirs, because theirs is not by the will of God. Right. They're, they're judging and what they do is not in the word of God. Okay? So we need to, yes, the Lord just should judge. Right? This is judging. We got to see if their righteousness is better than ours. Yeah. Matthew 7, verses 15, 16, and verse 20. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in cheap clothing, but inwardly there are raven wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Verse 20, wherefore, by their fruits, fruits you shall know them. Again, how are you going to know them? You're judging them what kind of fruits they got. So there's a way that we can judge. The Lord's showing us right here. We can't do this unless we're judging the person. Does he have fruits or not? Right? The, the Lord's command is to know them by their fruits in their life. Matthew chapter 18, verse 15 through 17. Moreover, brother, moreover, if thy brother shall trespass, trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear, if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And how many times this verse is taken out of context, I can't tell you. Verse 17, if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. 
it shows here that we are to judge backsliders. We see a brother or sister that's backslidden. We need to go to them and try to have them to repent. And if they don't hear us, then we need to take it to the church. But that's judging, right? If we judge them the way the Lord wants to show us how to judge, he's trying to show us the wrong way and he's trying to show us the right way. All right? We need to learn how to judge. Too many Christians, too many Christians, not well, lost people too, but Christians, they judge wrong in the wrong ways with the wrong motives. They don't judge with love, not like our Lord did. They're ready to put us down in a second. A brother or sister is ready if they're not walking in the spirit. And like I said, if it makes them look good, oh yeah, I saw him or her, whatever, just to make themselves look good. If, if we judge with the love that the Lord has given us, then we're judging the right way. Amen? Because we're judging with love. Judging in the flesh with no mercy, that's not the Lord's way. But you know how many of us do it? How many of us are guilty of it? Even, even me, I, I have been guilty of it. The Lord has shown me, as I grow in my walk with him, the Lord has shown me, ah, oh, Jesse, the Lord has shown me. Jesus knows all about us. That's why we, that's when, he judges. He's going to judge because he knows all about us, right? In John chapter 4, verse 39. Now listen. And many of the uh, Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman. This is the woman at the well with the Jesus Jesus was talking to. And she went to town to tell everybody, which she said she was testifying about Jesus. And she said, he told me all that I ever did. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> when we're witnessing to someone who is lost, that's okay. Because, because the Lord gives us permission. But the Lord sees everything, everything we ever did. This is what this woman, this is part of her excitement from talking to Jesus. Because who else can say that? Who else can say that but the Lord? That's why we, we can't see everything. The Lord can. Right. We can't. But if we do see it, and I'm saying if we see it, not somebody else and we're told, not that. But if we see it in a brother or sister that's maybe backslidden, then we do have the right, like we just read, to f confront them and try to get them to repent in love. Not in anger, in love. All right? God is good. God is good. Even though he knew, listen to me, even though he knew you, me, even though he knew us, he forgave us. He judged us. He judged us by saying, hey, I want you to have salvation. Amen. He didn't hold nothing against us. Nothing. I don't care how bad we were. And some of us was pretty bad, okay? I don't care how bad we were. The Lord was, was ready to judge us to be right with him if we would only believe in him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. The Lord knows that the devil has a grip on lost people. He knows that. The devil has a grip on them. When we tell people, lost people, about salvation, to believe in him, to, to trust in him, to put the Lord Jesus in their heart, that's what we're doing, to show the love of Jesus, to show the love how he forgave us. Well, look what the Lord did to me. And this is the way I was. Amen? And that's the way we tell other people. You know, some of us use the excuse, well, I don't know what to say. Yeah, you do. Just use your own life. Just use your own life. What did God do to you that you opened your eyes and, and accepted him as Lord? 
Because if he did it for you that way, he can do it for another person that way. Amen? Amen. So don't ever say that you don't know what to say. Quit, like I always say, quit listening to the devil. Yeah. Now, when we talk to him about salvation, are we talking to him about uh, also you got to speak in tongues? Uh, we don't do that. That's a religion thing. The no, a, no, a non-denomination thing. Or do we tell them, hey, you need to get water baptized. Uh, then, we're, then we're going off, off of uh, what spirit. We're in the flesh now. Because like I've always said before, when we tell them to accept Jesus and, and, there is no other and. Put Jesus in your heart. Give him your heart. Period. Period. And speak in tongues. Zilts. And get water baptized? Nope. Go to church every day? Nope. You know, they got people going to church every day that are going to hell. Do we know that? Church does not save us. Right. Works don't save us. Oh, I give to the poor. I've done this and I've done that. I help build. Is that going to save you? Works don't save us. Did the man next to Jesus... Did he do any of these things? Did he speak in tongues? Did he get water baptized? Was he doing anything to show his salvation? No. He died as soon as he got born again. And he did get born again because the Lord said, you'll be with, in paradise with me today. So he got born again. Luke 23, verse 39 through 43. And one of the male factors which were hanged railed on him, saying, if thou be Christ, save thyself and us. This is what one of the criminals did on the cross but the other answering, answering rebuked him saying doest not thou fear God seeing thou art the same condemnation Jesus was being condemned for living the way they did there were criminals them too there were criminals I don't know what they did but they were being killed for, their, for whatever they did and Jesus was right next to them being put to death just like they were. Verse 41. And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. And the man said, we're getting what we deserve. But this man has done nothing amiss. Oh, amen. Jesus hasn't done anything wrong and he's dying like a criminal. Our Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, who could have just called down a legion of angels and got out of this mess. But his love for you and me was so great, he died like a criminal. This, this male factor is what the Bible calls him. Recognized Jesus because he saw him eat with sinners. He heard him say to the people that were weary and heavy laden to come to him and he'll give them rest. Is that the Lord or what? Who can do that but the Lord? <laughs> Amen. In verse 42, and he said unto Jesus, Lord, what have I said about that? You can't call someone Lord unless by the Holy Spirit. Just like Paul. Paul called Jesus Lord. Now, you can just say Lord in the flesh, but not mean it, okay? He said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Amen. Remember me. You can only call him Lord from the heart. In the spirit, this man got saved. Like I said, he, he knew Jesus. He knew Jesus. But when he saw the other man just convicting him and just talking bad about him, it finally touched him and said, hey, this man, how did he know this man hadn't done anything wrong? Because he saw his life. Yeah. He can't, didn't, if he didn't know Jesus at all, how can he say this man hasn't done anything wrong? He could say that because he saw the life of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Verse uh, 43 and Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, oh, beautiful, beautiful words. Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Amen. 
Jesus said, you'll be with me. Amen? Amen. We're going to be with Jesus, people. We're going to be with... He, he lives in us now. But one day, we will see him face to face. You know, we have him here. And, and, and yeah, I mean, we know him and have him in our heart, in our... Here, but one day, oh my gosh. Today, you'll be with me in heaven. When that time comes, Jesus is saying, today, whenever that day is, you're going to be with me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Don't go out there and commit suicide. <laughs> but amen. I mean, he told this, this guy who sinned all his life, all his life. And right there at the very end, he recognized Jesus and believed in him. Amen. So we, you, have, you know somebody who's, who's on their deathbed and they're wicked and evil? They can still be saved. Amen. Now, when Jesus said this, Luke 23, 34, Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Oh, my gosh. The Lord is always ready to forgive us, no matter what we did. Amen. Do you see why we need to give the Lord all of our heart, soul, and mind? What he was saying here to them, that he wasn't holding the Roman uh, soldiers of this particular sin. What they were doing at that time. Not forgetting them of sin like they got born again. But the Lord asked that he forgive them for what they were doing. At that time. Right at that time. Now this gives us, a, this gives us hope. For our own forgiveness. Can you see the heart of God? His mercy that he has on us. How many of us don't know him? How many of us sin in here? How many of us sin quite a bit? Sin, a lot or a little, it's against God. And he has enough love and mercy to forgive us if it's coming from the heart, just like he did this, this criminal right here. And just like he did with the Roman soldiers who killed him. And probably the same ones who, who made him suffer, pulled his beer out. Forgive them, but they don't know what they're doing. When his enemies said, crucify, crucify, Jesus said, forgive. <laughs> Did y'all hear me? People, we've done that. Not actually said crucify, but we've killed them in many ways before we gave our life to them. But, he's, but what's he, what did he say? Forgive them. God. Sometimes I can't control myself up here because these words, these words of the Lord just, they excite me. They excite me. Am I a Pentecostal preacher? No. I'm just an excited Christian living for the Lord and I love the words of God. Amen? Because a lot of things he says just lifts me up high. High. Amen. Jesus is willing to forgive them. People like us. No matter what we've done. God. And if, we're, if we were lost when we did it, all we had to do was come to him. That's all we got to do. Jesus said, come. Make me your Lord. Make me your Savior. I don't care. Just like that song we sing, come as you are. That's what the Lord wants. And like I said, when we sang that song, it's not saying, uh, clean yourself up, then come to me. No. Jesus is saying, come as you are. If you were cursing me, talking bad about me, Jesus don't care what you were doing. Come as you are. And if you come as you are, that means you have given your life to the Lord. Amen? Amen. And he's ready to forgive us. And this teaching ain't on forgiveness. But we can see what forgiveness is. Yeah. Even in his agony. Agony. And boy, did Jesus go through it. Like I said, pulled his beard out. The Bible says he didn't even look like a man. 
I would have looked at them as my enemies. That's the way I would. And to say forgive them, who would have done that? They're, they're torturing you. They're making you suffer. And now they want to kill you. You think I'm going to say forgive them? No, no, there's my enemies. Jesus. Do you see, we need to grow to be like Jesus with that kind of love. Forgive them. Forgive them, Lord, for what they've done. Forgive them. Stephen said it as he was being stoned. Stephen. Remember Stephen? was stoned to death. He asked the Lord to forgive them. Why? Because Stephen was a man of God who had the Lord right here in his heart and he wasn't playing or acting Christian like many do. He was sincere about walking with the Lord and that's why he was able in the power of the Holy Spirit to say, forgive them. This is a man, this is Stephen, a man just like me and you. Some of us look at Jesus and say, well, that was Jesus. No, Jesus was 100% man. To be like that, we have to have a walk with the Lord I mean, they mocked him, they spit on him, they beat him, pulled his beer out. I mean, can you, I used to have a beer. I, ooh, if someone was to grab my beard and pull it, and pull, not just pull it, pull it out. Yeah. It's just like your hair on your head. What if someone was to come to you and just pull your hair out of your head? Oh my gosh, you see what Jesus went through. Do we see that? They put a crown of thorns on his head. And then they killed him. They drove nails through his hands and his feet. And killed him. For what? For us. For us. Like the man, the other criminal. He said, he's done nothing wrong. Amen. That's how much Jesus, the Lord God, loves us. Father, forgive them. The Lord was shown his divine mercy. That's the Lord's divine mercy on somebody, on all of us, who still loved us. If we would, be, if we would just humble ourselves before the Lord, humble ourselves before the Lord, knowing all this, knowing what he's done for us. I mean, we should be so humbling to the Lord. I don't even know what words to say. Because of what he's, done, what he's done. Forgive them. Second Peter 3 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long sovereign to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's how much he loves us. He don't care what you've done. He don't care how many Jews Hitler killed. He wanted Hitler to get born again. Y'all hear me? Who? Could, I mean, Hitler. Uh, you almost can't get worse than Hitler. Y'all hear me? Jesus, not willing that any any Hitler's in there, willing that none would perish. Always ready to forgive. Always ready to forgive, man. This is the love of our Lord Jesus. And to tell you the truth, I'm just getting started on his love. Amen? Where, where the Lord in many verses is going to show us how much he loves us. And like I said, it's not really just because he was suffered and was tortured. Yeah, that's love. But there's other ways the Lord has shown his love for us. Amen? I tell Heavenly Father, Thank you for this time. Father, I'm speaking for myself, Lord. I can't, I can't, I just can't understand why you love me so much. After the way I lived, not wanting you in my life, not wanting to have anything to do with you. But you wanted me, Lord. 
Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that the Spirit spoke to me, that the Spirit spoke to me, and my eyes were open to you. And that's got to be the best, the, the mightiest thing that ever happened to me was seeing you and accepting you as my Lord and Savior. And because of that, Lord, I am so, so anxious to tell others. I am so hungry for your words because I want to know you because of your love that you have shown to me. I want to know you, Lord. And not only know you, I want to live. I want to obey you to show you how much I love you. So thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you for being the Almighty God, for being my Redeemer, my Savior, for being everything to me, Lord, everything. I can't imagine one second of my life without you. I can't. It would scare me to death. So thank you, Lord, for being mine. Thank you for being my God, my Father, my Father, my Daddy. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.